We know that trade is an extremely important topic for the marine industry. It has been a constantly evolving situation. And so what we hope to do today is answer some of your questions, provide a little bit of clarity, and show you how we can move forward. Um, I am being joined by my colleague, Sarah Angel, president of NMA Canada. So we'll be able to offer you both a US, Canadian, and global perspective of the impact. Looking at an outline for today's webinar, we're going to talk a little bit about um, all the tariffs that are impacting the marine industry, then do a bit of a deeper dive into what's known as Section 232. We'll go into how you can participate, what we've already been doing as far as NMMA um, on this issue, and how you can help participate to make a difference. And then, as Erica said, we will have an opportunity for Q&A um, at the end. So starting off, let's go to our tariff overview. Unfortunately, the marine industry is being hit from multiple fronts on the trade um, debate. President Trump has had a very aggressive trade agenda utilizing decades old laws and oftentimes unconventional methods um, when dealing with some of our closest allies. But there's five main areas that we're seeing an impact in the trade realm um, and I want to briefly touch on each one of those. First is what's known as anti-dumping and countervailing duties. This was an investigation started late last year, which focuses on aluminum sheet, a primary source of materials for aluminum and um, fishing boats. Next, we have what's called Section 301. That targets China, um, and it is in, in, it, in particular to component parts that are coming from China. There's about 1,300 parts on that list. 300 of them would impact the marine industry and the possibility there is for a 25% tariff. The next thing that we have been focused on are ongoing negotiations with NAFTA, um, having a NAFTA 2.0, if you will. Um, there have been successful discussions in the past few months, but um, with the recent action in the past couple of weeks and some of the rhetoric out there, it seems that this will be on pause um, definitely in the near term. And then there's what's known as Section 232. This has to do with the worldwide imposition by the U.S. of steel and aluminum tariffs and that what we will talk about in more depth, the retaliation that we are seeing from some of our allies. So five major areas that the marine industry is being impacted um, and we'll, we'll get into some more details um, as the webinar goes on. So there's a little bit of confusion out there that this is only impacting aluminum boats, pontoon boats, fishing boats. And while that is definitely true, um, I think it helps to put it in perspective that there are three main buckets that we're seeing um, the industry being impacted by. So the first is the raw material, um, the aluminum itself, though there is some steel used in the industry. Um, but we know that aluminum is a critical raw material for boat manufacturing. Just last year, 44% of all boats sold were aluminum-based. There are two tariff actions that are impacting the cost and supply of aluminum. That's Section 232, which is the worldwide tariff, and as I mentioned before, the, or the anti-dumping and countervailing duty investigation that's focusing on sheet aluminum. What we've seen as a result of this are increased prices worldwide on the cost of aluminum, as well as supply shortages and concerns in the domestic market. The second bucket is what we've labeled components. And so component parts and accessories ranging from propellers to engines to marine navigation are subject to the, what's called the 301 investigation that the U.S. is, is proposing to slap China with 25% tariff on a host of goods. Now, this would impact all boats if those component parts are sourced from China. Um, so that would be something that the, the entire U.S. boating industry um, could possibly see an impact for. Now, the third bucket, again, would impact all boats that are being exported. We know that there is a strong um, export value for many of our marine manufacturers with 95% of the world's consumers outside of the U.S. Many of you have built your business model um, with a strong export component. In 2017, we saw an increase of 
1.6% in exports and about $1.7 billion in value. As we'll get into more detail, retaliation by our key allies is on all boats, and so that could also impact your export market and your dealer network. So hopefully these three buckets kind of put it into context, the realm of tariffs that we are facing and how that impacts everything from the materials used, the component parts, and where you sell the actual end product. Tariffs are just another word for tax. They're a tax on goods from overseas. History has shown the boating industry that they are not good for, for the for boat manufacturers um, and, and the like. In the 90s, we saw it here in the U.S. We've seen it worldwide as other countries have tried to impose taxes on the boating industry. With an elastic product like marine, uh, like the marine industry that is very sensitive to changes in prices and consumer demand, um, it is why we are very concerned about what's happening here in the U.S. and the response worldwide. Um, part of the reason, obviously, we're having this webinar and, and trying to do all we can on multiple fronts to push back against these very threatening um, tariffs on the marine industry. What we want to do now is dive a little bit deeper into what I've referred to as Section 232. So to give you a little bit of background, Section 232 refers to a provision in the Trade Expansion Act of 1962, which allows the government, the U.S. government, to restrict or block imports based on national security interests. It has rarely been used this broadly as this administration is currently using now. Um, but it kind of gives you the context that we're seeing um, when we refer to Section 232. It's been around since the 60s um, and, and is being applied um, for our industry now on steel and aluminum. This gives you a little bit of a, a timeline of, of what's happened on the 232 action. So back in March, President Trump, under this his authority, imposed a 10% tariff on aluminum and a 25% tariff on steel worldwide. Immediately following that announcement, many countries came and were, were very upset about the situation. Um, it, it, like I said, it's rarely been used this broad. There is a worldwide impact. These are two very critical raw materials that are sourced globally. And so countries in the, in the months following this announcement have been working with the U.S. to um, develop a negotiation, most of the times in the form of quotas. Um, and so far, Brazil, South Korea, and Australia have been exempt from this tariff. Now, during those negotiations, our key trading partners, including Mexico, Canada, and the European Union, were also involved seeking a permanent exemption. We were very hopeful that that exemption would um, take place. Initially, it was thought that they would reach a deal at the beginning of May, then it was pushed to June. And what we saw last week on June 1st was there was no deal. And so President Trump announced that he would impose those tariffs on Canada, Mexico, and the EU. And nearly automatically, all three of those major trading partners um, issued, issued lists for retaliation. So while we're retaliating or we're putting a tariff on their steel and aluminum that's coming into the U.S., they are now proposing to put a tariff on U.S. products that's going over into their countries. So I want to dig a little bit into all three of those um, markets and the retaliation we're seeing. And with that, I'll turn it over to my colleague, Sarah, to talk about Canada. Good afternoon, everyone. As Nicole previously already mentioned, so for Canada, as we all know, it will be effective June the 1st, July the 1st, and will impose a 10% per tariff against the U.S. imports. There's been a lot of pressure put on the Prime Minister to make it effective immediately, and we've been very supportive of at least there being a, somewhat of a grace period before that comes into place. So a couple of facts that we've been using in you know discussions with government and to point out the fact that nearly 40% of the exports from the U.S. are with Canada, um, and our statistical abstract showed us that there were more than 100,000 new and pre-owned boats sold in Canada. That's about 39,000 new units and 61,000 pre-owned units, and more than 65% of those come from the United States. So the U.S. is the top market for both imports and exports in Canada, totaling almost $800 million of, from the U.S. 
Canadian dollars and almost 200 million going into the US. And on the right side there, you'll see the actual mention of the HTS codes that are impacted. Next slide, please. We are making some specific asks to the Prime Minister and the entire government of Canada, and in first and foremost, specifically to have recreational boats removed from the tariff. It is the only recreational product listed in the list, so it's unjustified and unfair um, measure. Failing that, we are making some specific requests so that we can see some concessions or a grace period or grandfathering of about six months where the tariff would not be applied as there are, of course, already many boats that have already been ordered and not delivered and expected to arrive into Canada after July the 1st. And also, in addition to that, should the tariffs proceed and later agreements be made between the U.S. and Canada, we're asking that the tariffs be returned as to not burden the importer and the dealer that would not be able to pass through the cost to the consumer. We've also engaged um, with the Canadian Chamber of Commerce they're making some recommendations that it would be a good idea to engage more closely with the U.S. Chamber of Commerce and get into the grassroots, into the U.S. and various states so that we can continue to put the pressure on at all angles in the U.S. Next slide. Pass it back over to Nicole, I believe. Thanks, Sarah. Um, so, in addition to Canada, Canada's retaliation, we are also facing retaliation from the European Union. Effective as early as June 20th, they are proposing a 25% tariff against all U.S. imported boats. Um, if you look at the Canadian market, it represents about $338 million in value, and 22% of total U.S. boat exports are destined for that market. Tomorrow, the European Commission will vote on that proposed retaliation list. This is actually um, was the first market that had put out a list, so we've seen it for quite a while, and they have continued as negotiations were um, ongoing to, to, to move forward in, in their process, and so we will see a vote tomorrow, and then, as I said, could see it as early as, as the week after these um, retaliatory tariffs actually being imposed. Here you'll see the long list of products that are included in the Europeans' um, retaliation, everything from sailboats to, um, to pleasure boats, canoes. Um, so if your product falls in one of those HTS codes, um, if the vote is successful tomorrow, it would likely see a 25% tariff if imported into the European Union. Mexico has also announced retaliation. They actually announced their retaliation immediately after unable to reach a deal with the U.S. And for our industry, it would impose a 15% tariff on U.S. boat imports. You can see that Mexico represents about $147 million in export value and 10% of the total exports. There you'll also see the HTS code that would be impacted by uh, boats being shipped into Mexico and facing immediately now a 15% additional tax. So Sarah and I have, have been getting a lot of your, your questions and, and doing our best to answer them, and hopefully we've answered some more already. But some ongoing questions that we'd like to tackle now. Who pays the tariff? Well, the tariff will be paid by the importer of record. Some of you have asked, is this new boats, used boats, as, as, as Sarah mentioned, it's all boats that fall under the HTS codes that are being listed by these trading partners. So if we've listed it on, on this webinar and you will have a copy of this, um, those would be subject whether, whether new or used. Are engines included? Um, as you can see from the list that we put out there, it's only really the boat package that we're seeing. Um, with the exception of, as I mentioned earlier on, the 301 tariff um, and products coming from China, engines are separately included in that. What about boats purchased prior to July 1st? Unfortunately, 
it, the, the date that matters is the date that that product actually crosses over into the new market. So July 1st would be what we are expecting for Canada. It could be even earlier for the European Union. Um, and then if you're if you're shipping a boat to Mexico today, they would be subject to that tax. So it it, it's, it, it happens when the country has decided um, that to impose the tariff, not when the boat was actually sold. Why are we being targeted? I mean, it has really become an unfortunate situation. As Sarah mentioned, we're the only recreational product in Canada that's being targeted. Uh, we are being joined by motorcycles in the European Union, but again, one of very few recreational products that are being targeted. It, it is a political move. Our allies are making a political stance against the president and his actions, um, and they are targeting U.S.-based manufacturers and American-made products. So from boats to beer to blue jeans are all part of these um, really robust retaliation lists. When does it end? Um, we're unsure. Um, you know, their hope is there's still a little bit of wiggle room as Canada makes their decision and the European Union um, makes their decision that there could be an agreement. Um, as many of you, I'm sure, have seen, the rhetoric has definitely heated up here in the U.S. Um, but this is a decision that lies with the president. So it would be his decision to change course if there was some sort of agreement with our key allies, or in the case of a next, the next administration, um, that president would have authority to remove these tariffs um, and, and change course. So how can you help? Um, we have been on, on both the U.S. and Canada and working with our global partners for quite a few months on this tariff situation dating back to November when we were focusing on aluminum sheet. We've been working with members of Congress to put pressure on this administration and raise the concerns of the marine industry. We've worked with our counterparts at ICOMIA and EBI issuing a joint statement back in March expressing our concerns. Many of you have joined us at the American Boating Congress or the day up on the Hill and, and Parliament in Canada talking about trade and the impact on the industry. Um, we've testified, we've sent letters, um, we're supporting legislation, though you know we're unsure whether that will have um, significant legs. We're really trying all avenues to put political pressure on the situation as well as elevating our voice through communications that you hopefully have seen in, in, in trade publications as well as a lot of the, the local and what we call beltway media here in Washington people are starting to make notice and our voice is definitely out there. Uh, but there's definitely more that you can do and this webinar comes at an appropriate time um, for you to take further action. So I'll turn it to Sarah to, to let you know how you can help in Canada. Well, as I mentioned, we are um, today actually, it was going out later this afternoon, a letter that NMMA is sending out co-signed with our regional marine trade association partners that will be directly um, asking the prime minister those specific things that I mentioned in the previous slide and, you know, outlining the significant economic impact that the recreational boating industry has to Canada's economy and the close ties that we have with the U.S. manufacturing of boats coming into Canada and there's been a lot of questions you know about domestic supply you know stepping up and we've been quite adamant to to say that that is not something that is feasible in the short term and the two economies are very closely tied to each other so that's just uh, we'll you'll we'll be able to provide everyone a copy of the letter should they wish to forward it on you can go to the next slide we'll talk more a little bit further on what everyone can do yeah, so it's really important that our governments hear from you, whether you're in the U.S. or you're in Canada. Um, in the U.S., you will be getting a email shortly after this that we encourage you to sign on. We are sending a petition to the president, to his cabinet officials, to Congress to raise our concerns about the host of uh, impacts the marine industry is facing in this tariff and, and trade climate. I really encourage you to sign up, sign your name on, sign your company's name on, share with your employees, share with your colleagues. We want to have thousands of names on this because this is something that we will be able to take as we're meeting with the governments and to talk about how our industry is concerned. 
We'll also be outlining in the coming days other opportunities for you to have your voice heard, that not only does the president need to hear from you, but the governors need to hear from you. They need to know that voting is big business in Florida and Wisconsin and Tennessee and, and elsewhere, and, and they are concerned about the impact this is having on their industry. We've heard it already, but they need to know boats are part of that. So it's really critical if you are trying to help in the U.S. to make sure that you add your name, add your company's name to the sea of voices that are raising a concern so that we can take those to key decision makers and hopefully make a difference. Um, the end goal is obviously to reach an agreement and have retaliation off the table, um, but we will be working every avenue to, to lessen the impact on the marine industry. So look out for that email. Please sign up, sign your name, and share with others. And Sarah, what can they do in Canada? Yeah, and so in particular, um, what we would suggest is that every Canadian business impacted right directly to the Prime Minister Formal submissions are also being accepted until this Friday through the finance tariff consultations. That's channel number two. And everyone in Canada, wherever your business is located, should write your member of parliament. You can easily find them by going to uh, parl.gc.ca, and then you can figure out who they are if you're not sure, and then it's just their first name, dot last name. Um, the other thing is any U.S manufacturers or businesses wishing to also provide common into Canada, that is also a good idea. My recommendation would be that you find one of your Canadian um, counterparts address, some, some sort of a Canadian contact with a Canadian address and make your submission through the Canadian channel and find ways to address the issues um, with the Canadian jobs impacting as well as the U.S. side. Okay, next slide. So a bit a bit brief, but we're we, we know that many of you have questions, so happy to take some of those questions here. Um, you have both Sarah and I's contact information. Um, we will be sharing this slide, so you'll have the list of HTS codes um, that will be um, directly emailed to you. It'll be available on our website, and as I mentioned, the, the calls to action of where you can write in and and how to do that will be shared um, following the webinar. Uh, but with that, happy to take any questions. Okay, so there is a question. Are tariffs on both boat exports to Canada going to be imposed on packages or just hulls? As I understand it, it's it, it's on the package. So, but the if it's a loose engine, loose engines are not included, but it's the package of the boat which includes the engine. Okay. What are you expecting the price of aluminum sheet to do over the next 12 months? We've already seen nearly a 20% increase in the worldwide price of aluminum. Um, we know that many manufacturer, boat manufacturers source their aluminum domestically, um, but the combination of the investigation to, into China, Chinese sheet, as well as this worldwide tariff, is causing drastic increases in, in the overall worldwide cost of aluminum. And that's everything from the ingot all the way to the, the sheet and, and the coils itself. So um, we expect that to continue. There is a lot of aluminum sourced from Canada and the European Union, and so we um, would, would expect that to be an, another increase in price. Okay. Has NMMA reached out to the RV industry for support regarding the tariff issue? Um, yes, we have, and actually we are working closely with both the RV industry as well as the trailer manufacturers industry on the anti-dumping case. All three of us are um, working very collaboratively both on the political front as well as the legal front there. Um, RVs are not impacted by the retaliation, but we are, we are working hand in hand with them um, on the aluminum side, and they have been a great ally along with our friends and, and the trailer manufacturers. And similarly, we have a very good relationship with the RV industry in Canada. Okay. Can engines be invoiced and shipped directly from the OEM to the dealer? Um, I'm not sure how... Can you just ask it again? Because I'm not sure if that's 
directly a question that we can answer based on what the tariff, how the tariffs will be set up. Okay, so the question is, can engines be invoiced and shipped directly from the OEM to the dealer? And are these transa transactions subject to tar import tariffs? If it's a loose engine, it's not listed on the tariff. So it wouldn't apply for the engine. Okay. That's correct. And that's for Canada, the EU, and Mexico. Okay. And then this will be the last question. Are engines taxed and are used boats taxed? So again, if you're if the engine is part of the boat package, then it would be subject to the tariffs on the three countries or three markets that we talked about. If it's separate, they have not been targeted, um, and this is for new and used boats. The it, it's based on whatever the HTS code is, not the the status or the age of the boat. Okay, and that is the conclusion of the Q&A. As we mentioned before, we will send out an FAQ sheet uh, to address any additional questions uh, that we may come across. Well, thank you all for joining us today. Please keep an eye out for our communications. We will continue. This is a very evolving situation, um, but we wanted to get you on the call as soon as possible to give you as much information. You have our contact information. Um, if you had asked a question that we didn't get to, we'll make sure to respond. Um, and, and please weigh in. Make sure that you, you are weighing in in Canada and the U.S. and we can have our voice heard. So thank you all for joining us.